Okay, welcome to our continued study of Mary Tamu's mask. You heard me correct. I said Mary Tamu's mask. And we're looking at a falling god, small g o d, Tamu. And we've looked at Tamu's in quite a bit of ways. And today we're going to look at the resurrection of Tamu's. That's correct. Our study, Mary Tamu's Mass. And we'll get to what you call Christ Mass. We'll get to that study later. But the Mary Tamu's Mass has a resurrection. Whoa. Last week we looked about uh, Tamu's and gardens, small little gardens, and we looked about where. We've looked at what, and now we're going to get his resurrection. And I'm going to get a page here. I want to show you something here. Okay, this. Let me show you something. See that? See that? You see that? See that? See that? Know what that is? That's one whole page of documented people who know what they're talking about, who have studied this, and their job, their life, their paycheck is what we're talking about now about Tamu. So this is not just coming out of, you know, this ain't Facebook or, you know, this is real. So the resurrection of Tammuz. In the late 19th and early 20th century scholars of religion, Tammuz was widely seen as a prime example of the type of prototype of the dying and rising God, what we call resurrection, died and up from the grave. It's Tammuz. Scholarship of religion in the 19th and 20th century. I mean, this is not dark back in the dark ages. This ain't in caveman time. The discovery of a full Sumerian, Sumerian text of in Iana. Now you remember Iana. We did Iana when we did Easter. We did Iana when we did Easter in disguise. Iana. Is that star? He's star. So we discover Sumerian texts of Inanna descend into the mid 20th century disprove the previous scholarly assumption that the narrative ended with Demuzai resurrection instead of reveal the ended of Demuz death. So what it's saying here is instead of Demuzai, which is Tamuz. The actual death was in Anna. Also, Esther. But we will see later, we will see the death of Tamuz. But it's also associated with Esther. And there are sometimes when you take Easter. The celebration of eggs and love and chocolate. And you count over nine months, the time for a female to carry in her womb an, a life. From point of time of Easter to December 25th, you've got nine months. But we're looking at the resurrection. The rescue of Demuzai or Tammuz, from the underworld and his ascension to heaven would later be found in the text Return of Demuzai translated in 1963. So there was a time Demuzai, Tammuz, he died and came up from the grave. Well, we don't think so. We think Esther did that. But we're not sure. But in 1963, Finding evidence, archaeological evidence, and deciphering the evidence 
and I gave you, we, we have, look, this is just, this is just half a page of archaeology, people who study that. See all those names? These are the books. That's copyrighted information. I'm giving the credit to those who have the brains to do what we're studying. And in 1963, they translated the evidence they've dug up and Tammuz or Demuzai is a god, small g-o-d, and he died and he came from the dead. The dying and rising god. Now notice the scholars, the architects, and the scholarship of religion don't call it a resurrection. They call it a dying and rising God, small G-O-D. You can't call it resurrection because Jesus Christ is the resurrection. The late 19th century Scottish anthropologist, Sir James George Fraser, F-R-A-Z-E-R, wrote extensively about Temu in his monumental study, Comparative Religion, The Golden Bow, the first edition, which was published in 1890. So here's a guy who knows what he's talking about, as well his later works, and he's published all kinds of books. Fraser's claim that Temu was just one example of a prototype of a dying, rising God throughout all cultures. So there's, throughout the history, there is like unto Jesus Christ, gods that have died and have come up imitation and antichrist. And did not Jesus himself say, there shall be many that will, that will come in my name? And some of them even before the Lord Jesus Christ was born. Tammuz's category as a dying and rising god was based on the abbreviated Akkadian uh, modification of Inanna's, that's Estar, descent into the underworld, which was missing the ending. Now, I, I know these names sound, I'm lost, because Tammuz has many names. Esther has many names. And when you go from Babylon into Egyptian to Roman to Greek, and as uh, 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 trying to spell other name, I got another name, uh, Assyrian. When you go into all these different cultures, it's the same God with a different name. It's the same devil, but he's got a different name. So, they're, what they're trying to say, you know, well, they say Tammuz died and came up from the grave. Well, they say Esther died and came up from the grave. Since numerous lamentations over the death of Tammuz, all right, it is sure, Tammuz the small G-O-D has died. We'll get into weeping later. Had already been translated. Scholars filled in the missing ending. We couldn't find the ending to the story. Assuming that the reason for Estar's descent was because she was going to resurrect Demuz, or Demuzai, and that the text could therefore be assumed to the end of Tammuz's resurrection. So Demuzai dies. Esther, Easter, goes down into hell to get Demuzai. But we keep getting we keep getting crossed over. We keep getting confused between Demuzai and Tammuz, though they're the same character, but Demuzai is a Tammuz of another region, another area. And the confusion is, well, there's all kinds of stories of a man that built an, a boat, an ark, a ship, 
and gathered a bunch of animals of a worldwide deluge. And yet that story is true through the Bible. And there are tales and, and stories and replicas throughout all the regions of the world. And the Chinese version may not match the Korean version, which may not in, be likened to the Russian version, which may be different from the German version, which may be different from the South African version, which may be different from the Inca version, but we're talking about the same character. And it just comes down to one big mess, but I can sum it up in the Bible. There is, there is only one name above all names. There is only by the name of Jesus Christ. And yet the men have come up with other. Men have come up with other gods. And the Roman Catholic Church takes a god from another climate and another country and another group of people and they bring it into they bring her into their religion of Esther, Easter, Diana to Mary. Well which is she? She's all of them. Who's Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. Tamus Characterization of a dying and rising God was based on abbreviated uh, modification of Inanna. They couldn't find the end. Then in the middle of the 20th century, the complete, unabridged, original Sumerian text of Inanna's Estar descent was finally translated. Somebody didn't finish the story. They came up with gossip as you would in a Baptist church. They deciphered half the story. Okay, we'll put that on the bookshelf. We got enough to tell the kitty. Someone came along and said, okay, let's decipher the rest. Revealing that instead of the ending of the Muzai resurrection, as long had been assumed, the text actually ended with the Muzai's death. So there is a death of this God. Some say he didn't resurrect, depending on what they translated. Some say he did resurrect, according to what they translate. And you say, Stolly, what's the, what's, what's the problem? It's not the Bible. The Bible affirms what it says. And make it simple. And I'm going to just name two two groups of people that we would understand. The Incas story may not be the same as the Roman story, which is probably quite different from the Greek story, which is probably different from the Babylonian story. It's almost the same God with a different name with a little touch of story for our, that it pleased our group of people. And yet the Bible pleases nobody and the Bible states the true fact of God and yet God don't care if he offended anybody. That when the Greek gods came from the Roman gods, the Greek gods became of the, the hey, he's got to be Greek. That's why there's so much confusion. That's why the realm of small G-O-D-S and the small G-O-D-D-E-S-S, -S, there's no infallible proof. Because based upon where they get their information, it has been changed when another culture has grabbed what they found. And it's hard to describe when you, when you try to be a Bible. The rescue of Demuzai from the underworld. So Demuzai died. And ascension into heaven was later found in a return, in a text return of Demuzai, translated in 1963. So Demuzai, he died. Well, he come up from the grave. Uh, no, he didn't come up from the grave. Oh, we found some more information. Which, oh, he did come up from the grave. 
Do you know why Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? Because Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose from the grave three, night, three days and three nights according to the scriptures. This garbage comes from Who? The devil. And it has changed from one city to another city, from one family to another family, from one country to another country, from one age of people to another age of people. Listen, many of your Roman Catholic gods today have a pre-life as Greek gods, as Roman gods, as Babylonian gods, and Egyptian gods, and that's the danger for a Christian to have the gods of Roman, Greek, Babylonian, Egyptian, Chinese, whatever, with the label attached to it, Christian, and when you look up the information and you look up, well, we're going to do Christmas. Well, we're going to see that Christmas is related to Demuzai or Tammuz. And before we get to Christmas, the first holiday we come up to is Easter. We come to the death. That's what we're saying. Demuzai died. And they're fighting over, did he resurrect from the, or did he not resurrect? And yet we're finding evidence in 1963, he arose. Later when we get to Christmas, we find out it's the same God. So ignorantly, churches worship today in the name of Jesus. And it's not the name of Jesus, it's the name of the Antichrist. We're talking about today an ascension into heaven from the death of a small G-O-D, a copycat, an antichrist of Jesus Christ. Biblical scholars Eddie, or Eddie, Eddie and Boyd argued in 2007 that this text does not technically describe the triumph over death because the Muzai must be replaced in the underworld by his sister, thus reinforcing the in, yeah, inalterable power of the realm of his death. And when we did Esther, the Muzai died, but his sister went and took his place. Well, see, you see, the devil says, "Well, it can't be a complete copycat." Because no, no one took Jesus' place, but my my gods, my God went and took over another God in hell. No, Jesus Christ went to hell, deposited my, my sins. You notice how they say sister. I'm the bride of Jesus Christ. I'm not the sister. Jesus Christ went into hell to deposit the sins of his bride, female. However, other scholars have cited that the clear example of a God, small G-O-D, who has previously died and afterwards resurrected. So scholars and everybody, and they're, they're battling this over. Now, I know many pastors. I have a pastor in my church. And we all agree on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We all agree on the Last Supper. We all agree on the, uh, uh, the virgin birth and a woman named Mary. We all agree that Mary had other children. We all agree that Joseph was not the biological or no man was a biological son, uh, uh, father of Jesus Christ. We believe, we believe in, in uh, all believe in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the Jewish, Jewish line. That is not Ishmael. Now, we may differ on some things, and we may differ on the gap theory. We may differ on the continental drift theory. We may differ on the book of Hebrews. We may differ on, on uh, 
and the, I don't know what the word is, but you know, there is a scriptural foundation, and there is a scriptural bounds of hey, this is what it has to be according to the scriptures. And then there are other teachers we get out of the Bible, and men get out of the Bible that uh, that can use a modification. Now whether this man believes the continental drift theory and this man believes that there is a gap theory and this man doesn't believe in a gap theory, that's not going to get us to hell. That's not something that needs to be taught to be to be saved. Now you must believe in a virgin birth. You must believe in God the creator. You must believe on Jesus Christ. And if you believe that Jesus Christ is God, that's biblical. You believe that Jesus Christ is not God, that's not biblical. But when we get in the realm of all these gods and goddesses, it, 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 it interwines, it gets all confusing because they're all different gods. And yet they're trying to get one story, but you got Aztec, you got Babylonian, you got Assyrian, you got Roman, you got Greek, you got African, you got American. But the Bible, you got one, God the Father. And we're in the realm of, of what we're talking about here, Tamu, we're in the realm of the devil. So now this leads to the death and return life of Tamu. They can't say resurrection. Because the resurrection belongs to Jesus Christ. Resurrection belongs to God and the power of God. And there is indeed one. Though it though to call it and they say, resurrection, they put it in quotes. You cannot entitle resurrection to fallen gods. That belongs to Jesus. That belongs to the power of God through the apostles and Elijah. Through a call of resurrection, and Langdon does, and Langdon's another man who knows what he's talking about, is to remove all meaning from the word. Now it leads to the death and return life of Tamos, and there is one indeed, though it to call it resurrection, and Langdon does, is to remove all meaning from the word. Smith, in the origins of biblical monotheism, notes that the means of Tamu's return to life is unknown. But it adds to the description points to taking part in the ritual in which the dead are, re the dead are invoked and are temporarily manifested. So what they're saying is we can't say resurrection. Why can't you say resurrection? Because that belongs to the Almighty God. Almighty God resurrected the life of people through Elijah. God resurrected the life of those people that Jesus and the apostles and the Jesus Christ himself. Tammuz' death was usually ascribed, though, to raiders from the neither world who attacked him and took his sheep. Now remember, we talked about who Tamu is. He's a shepherd. Jesus Christ is a shepherd. Tamu has sheep. Jesus Christ has sheep. Are you getting to see the trouble? Thereafter, he was mourned by his mother, sister, and widow. He died. Well, Tamu's mother, Jesus' mother was married. She weep. Sister, Jesus had sisters. And widow, Jesus did not have a wife. Tamu's had a wife. And she has her own holiday. Called Esther. Now, I don't know what this, this is. L M capital T twenty nine and fifty four. That's stating the the reference, and I don't know what that reference means. I apologize. So I I quoted it there. 
But good news for them. Do you know what good news is? Gospel. Gospel means good news. Going all the world and preach the gospel, preach the good news. What? That Jesus is able to save your soul. But the good news for them, mother, sister, widow, Tamus did not stay dead. The shepherd who had his sheep stolen. God's sheep were stolen by the devil. And the devil became their father. And to gain them back and redeem them back, God had to send his son. God himself had to suffer and die, according to scripture, and would be buried. And arose again the third day, according to scripture, to buy back to redeem them sheep. But the good news for Tamu, he didn't stay dead. He came back later, rescued by his consort, his wife, and Anna, Esther, and some demons who sang to him. That's okay. This one here, L A N G T T L or T I. 20-1. I, I don't know what those references are, but I included it because it's some kind of reference. Now, you see what the devil, you see what the, the problem is when you say demons instead of devils? The King James Bible says devils. It does not say demons. And you're a King James Bible believing Christian, and yet you don't quote the King James Bible. You're quoting modern versions when you say demons. It is never demons. It is devils. When I was in school, they called me Styx, S-T-Y-X, because I studied Greek and Roman mythology. Demons are little creatures like fairies. There could be evil demons, and there could be good demons. That little bad demon on your shoulder telling you to do bad things and a little good demon angel on your other shoulder tell you good do it. there are no good devils and there are only evil devils there was no good demons that god cast out of people there would be no need if they were good and you are incorrect and you need to repent of your sin when you say demon because the word demon and the uses of demon will get you wood, hay, or stubble. And you, I believe it. That's why I am saying it. And again, there'll be people, well, I don't believe that's true. And, uh, you know, D and, okay. You're not going to go to hell if you believe demons. But you have no understanding of demons. You don't realize that demons, the truth is there could be good demons. But demons sang to him, and I gave you Lang Ti 20 1. I can't imagine the devil singing when Jesus came out of hell alive and well. The mechanism whereby this was accomplished, though not described, much less obviously compared to the Jewish resurrection. So what's being said here is this story has been stolen out of the Hebrew Bible. Guess who knows the Hebrew Bible? Guess who quoted scriptures to Jesus? In Mark chapter 4. Guess who told a woman in the garden. Yea hath God said. You shall not eat of every tree in the, gar in the garden. Yes the devil knows scripture. And the devil has come up with a copy. A copyright. Of God, but God doesn't copyright his Bible. The King James Bible. Only modern Bibles copyright their Bible. The devil has come up with a carbon copy. With some changes. And some tweaks. To get you off God and to get you off Jesus Christ. And the devil has stolen the gospel and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and applied it to Tammuz. 
or Dim Uzai. We got further studying. But the scholars, the archaeologists, the people who know, cannot call it resurrection. They're afraid to. The death and rising of Tammuz occurs every year and corresponds with the natural cycle of vegetation. Did you know that's a Roman Catholic teaching? You can do it every day. You can do it once a week. Or you can do it twice a week. You can kill Jesus Christ and put him in a wafer and put him in a cup. And you have killed Jesus over and over and over and over in what you call the Mass. And then you go Easter service and you celebrate every year the, the resurrected Christ. Friend, that's the celebration of Tammuz. Easter is not Christian, and yet it is celebrated in the Baptist churches. And the book of Acts says that Herod celebrated his holiday, Rome, and the Jewish holiday is Passover. They are completely different. When Rome, and, and, and you're speaking about Easter, you're celebrating the resurrection of Tammuz, not Jesus. Will you get right with the facts and the truth and stop teaching gods? Know your church history. Know Babylonian history. Know Egyptian history. Know what gods are from God. Or shut up. There is a God that died and he resurrected and it's not Jesus Christ on Easter. Easter is not one of the Jewish festivals proclaimed by God. And when you celebrate Easter, you are celebrating Tammuz. As you celebrate Christmas, you are celebrating the birthday of Tammuz. And you are wrong. But you're not going to go to hell over it. And that's some things where, well, we like it. And that's some things, it's wrong. And I'm not going to beat you over the head with a baseball bat. You're wrong. You're wrong. And it'll be all settled at the judgment seat of Christ. And this mess of Christmas and Easter would be, way, would be wood, hay, and stubble. This is why we're doing this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought, Stolly, I thought you said Mary to Tammuz, man. I thought we are going to study Christmas. We'll get into that. But... The Mary Tammuz Mass has brought us to the resurrection of Tammuz called Esther, Easter, and Anna. We've done that study. Go to my thing and look up. Look up on my study. Easter or Easter, Esther in disguise. Look it up on my website. Look it up on my YouTube. Look it up on my SoundCloud. We've done a whole study on it. And that has brought us to Mary Tammuz Mass. And I'm telling you, if you don't want to believe it or not, Christmas and Easter are not biblical. And they are nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They are a fallen God who was born, who died, and resurrected. And we're reading about him now. The death and rise in the Tammuz occurs every year corresponding with the natural cycle of vegetation, the springtime. Tammuz was allegedly resurrected by the goddess Inanna Estar. Now they got her name together. Sometimes it's Inanna, sometimes it's Estar, but she's the same. And she's called Easter. Esther. Now the writer has put in here resurrection, but it's not called resurrection. 
But I'll read as the writer has put it. Because I'm quoting from the writers. Tamu's resurrection is alleged, alleged, because the end of both the Sumerian and the Akkadian texts of the myth, <laughs> they call it a myth. It's not a myth for Jesus Christ. And yet what Baptist churches celebrate Tammuz's birthday and celebrate Tammuz's resurrection day as fact? Well, the text, the myth of descent of Inanna or Estar have not been preserved or they haven't found it yet. The story actually states that Demuzai or Tammuz, I know all these names are confusing, did not return from death to an early earthly life, but was placed in the underworld as a substitution for Inanna. Inanna died and Tammuz went and took her place. That's the work of Jesus Christ. He went into hell and deposited our sins for us. Apparently, there is only fragmentary evidence of Demuzai had his sister take his place in the underworld for half of the year. So, I mean, it's questionable. Tammuz died, went into, went into the underworld. All right, that's, that's a proven fact with, with the evidence we have. Tammuz died. What we what they can't find, what they can't understand, though some say it's true, is the story is well, Tammuz didn't stay in the underworld. His sister went down in Anna Estar and took his place for him. And there's some cultures that say Anna Estar died, went to the underworld, and Tammuz went to take her place. And there are some references of some places in the world where they say Tammuz died and he came up out of the underworld. And yet my Bible says Jesus Christ was born, probably the Feast of Tabernacles, but that's not sure. He was born of a virgin. He lived 33 and a half years. He suffered and died according to scriptures. He was buried and he arose again the third day according to scriptures. And he was seen above 400, 500 people. And is seated at the right hand of the Father today, right now, waiting to come get his church. And that's not myth, that's truth. This is the devil's nonsense. And even so, the story of Tammuz, by the right, is not like the resurrection story of Jesus. That's what the writer wrote. That's, that's not my words. Of the people that I got here, all the works, the writer of this section said, even so, the story of Tammuz is not like the resurrection story of Jesus. The scholar that wrote what I am reading it has identified somebody's trying to steal the resurrection story of Jesus, and Tammuz is a carbon copy. And yet his day is celebrated by the Baptist churches of Easter and Christmas every year. When comparing the stories of Tammuz, Demuzai, again, Demuzai uh, and Tammuz are the same, but they come from different cultures, different countries, so they have variants. Jesus Christ is the same of the King James Bible in Poland. He's the same of the King James Bible in Sierra Leone. He's the same of the King James Bible in Mexico. He's the same of the King James Bible in Thailand. He's the same of the King James Bible of North Pole. He's the same of the King James Bible in Florida. He's the same of the King James Bible in, in Europe. He's the same of the King James Bible in Australia. He's the same of the King James Bible in Antarctica. He's the same of the King James Bible all over the world. Tammuzai and Demuzai and Adonis. And we're going to talk about Adonis. You know what Adonis is? Uh, I believe it's, 
it's either Rome or Greek. I just, I forget right now. But where Roman or Greek, you know what it is? That's the Roman or Greek god of the Muzi and Tamus that we're reading about now. It's the same god, different names and stories slightly changed. When we're comparing the stories of Tammuz, Demuzi, and Adonis, we'll get to him later, with the resurrection stories of Jesus, these stories only demonstrate by a scholar strange similarity. Strange. Strange. And, and, I go, what did Jesus strain and a gnat swallow a camel? This is not me writing this. This is the people that we have their information. Somebody's trying to get you off the resurrection of Jesus by Tammuz, by Demuzi, and Adonis. And the person that wrote this says, uh uh. Stiley says, according to the Bible, no, sir. The Baptist churches, I don't care about the Catholic churches, I don't care about the Presbyterian churches, I don't care about the Methodist churches. I'm I'm a Baptist. I care about the Baptist church. The Baptist churches say, yeah. We'll even have egg hunts. And that we speak of the death and life of being. It is also likely the New Testament writers were mimicking later writings of dying and rising God due to the second century appearance. Of here, one writer says, you know what? I wrote this for a point. One writer says that the writers of the Bible copied the story of Tammuz and Demuzi and Adonai. He's saying that Jesus is the copy of Tammuz. The story of Tammuz and all that is such a copy. And one person says, hey, you know, they're trying to compare it to Jesus. And on the other side of the scale, someone says they copied Jesus' story from Tammuz and Demunzai. That's how close they are. And that concludes the resurrection, though they don't call it resurrection. Thank God. The dying and rising God, small g-o-d. Next week, Lord willing, We'll get to where. Look at where. Get these out. Pass them out. Share them. Say, hey, check out this idiot screaming and hollering. Check about uh, this God. He says it's Christmas. He says this. Check it out. Listen. I allow you to get these out.